namo te vastu te vaya om namo bhagavate vastu te vaya om namo bhagavate vastu te vaya text 20 एवं यतंतम विजने मोचर गिरा गंभीरलक्षणयावाचर spoke to me with gravity and pleasing words just to mitigate my grief text 21 hantasme jam janmani bhavan mamam drashtu me harhati avipaklavasha tayashaya nam durdasho ham ku yogina O oh, Narada, the Lord spoke. I regret that during this lifetime you will not be able to see me any more. Those who are incomplete in service and who are not completely free from all material taints can hardly see me. Text twenty two. Sakrit yadar shitam rupam etad kama yate nagha. मत काम शन कई साधु सर्वान मुंजंति कृष्ण ओ वर्चस वन यू हैव ओनली वन सीन माय पर्सन एंड दिस इज जस्ट टू इंक्रीज योर डिजायर फॉर मी बिकॉज़ द मोर यू यू हैंकर फॉर मी द मोर यू विल बी फ्रीड फ्रॉम ऑल द मटेरियल डिजायर्स टेक्स्ट 23 ट्रांसडेंटल वर्ल्ड after giving up the present deplorable material worlds text 24 matir mai ni badheyam na vipadde ta karhi chet praja sarga nirode pi smritesh cha madanugraha intelligence engaged in my devotion cannot be thwarted at any time even at the time of creation as well as at the time of annihilation your remembrance will continue by my mercy text 25 etavadukthvo paramarama tanmahat bhutam na bholingamale meeshwaram अहम मेटीरियल such chanting and remembering of the transcendental pastimes of the lord or benedictory so doing i traveled all over the earth fully satisfied humble and unenvious text 27 evam krishna mate brahma nasaktasya malatmanah kala pradur bhut kale tadit saudamani yatha 
senses were permanent. Yes, Deva. In due course of time, I, who was fully absorbed in thinking of Krishna and who therefore had no attachments, being completely freed from all material things, met with death as lightning and illumination occurred simultaneously. Prayujyamane maitam shuddham bhagavatim tanum anapta karma nirvano nyapatat pancha bautikaha. Having been awarded a transcendental body befitting an associate of the personality of Godhead, I quit the body made of five material elements. Thus, all acquired fruitative results of work karma stopped. Text 29. Kalpanta ida madaya shayanim bhasyutan vataha shishayi shora no pranam vivishenta raham vibo. At the end of the millennium, when the personality of Godhead, Lord Narayana, lay down within the water of div devastation, Brahma began to enter into him along with all creative elements. And I also entered through his breathing. Exodi Sahasra Yuga Pariyanti Uthayedam Sri Sukshutaha Marichi Mishraya Shushaya Prade Pyoham Chajak Nire. After 43 billion solar years, when Brahma awoke to create again by the will of the Lord, all the rishis like Marasiya, Angira, Atri, and so on were created from the transcendental body of the Lord. And I also appeared along with them. Text 31. Antar Bahishya Lokan Stream Paryemya Skandita Vritaha Anugrahan Mahavishnu Avigata Gati Kvachit. Since then, by the grace of Almighty Vishnu, I travel everywhere without restriction, both in the transcendental world and in three divisions of material world. This is because I am fixed in unbroken devotional service of the Lord. Text 32. Devadatta Mimam Vakvinam Swara Brahma Vibhushitam Murcha Yatva Hari Katam Gaya Magas Charam Yaham. And thus I travel constantly singing the transcendental message of the glories of the Lord, vibrating this instrument called Veena, which is charged with the transcendental sound which was given to me by Lord Krishna. Text 33. Pragayatas Paviryani Tirtapada Priyashravaha Ahut Iva Me Shikram Darshanam Yati Chetasi. The Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, whose glories and activities are pleasing to hear, at once appears on the seat of my heart, as if called for as soon as I begin to chant his holy activities. Text 34. Eta diatura chitta nam, matras per she chayamuhu, bavastin du plavo drishto, varnanam. It is personally experienced by me that those who are always full of cares and anxieties due to desiring contact of the senses with their objects, can cross the ocean of Nisans on the most suitable boat. The constant chanting of the transcendental activities of the personality of Godhead. Text 35. Yama Dibhir Yoga Patai Kama Loba Hato Muhu Mukunda Seva Yayatvat it is true that practicing it is true that by practicing restraint of the senses by the yoga system one can get relief from the disturbances of the desires and lust 
but this is not sufficient to give satisfaction to the soul for this satisfaction is derived from devotional service to the personality of godhead text 36 sarvam tadima tadida makhyatam yat prishto ham tvayanaka janma karma rahasyam me bhavataschatma shoshanam o vyasa deva you are freed from all sins thus i have explained my birth and activities of self realization as you asked all this will be conducive for your personal satisfaction also text 37 suta vacha evam sambhashya bhagavan narado vasa visutam ஆமந்திரியோ யூனிவர்ஸ் <laughs> Hare Krishna thank you so much Madan Prabhu and Meena Mata ji that is wonderful thank you very much all glories to your service Okay so thank you all for joining today I'm just going to get my PowerPoint up Okay, so you all can see the slides now. So we're discussing Canto One, Chapter Six, and today we'll be doing verse number twenty-three. Before we start, let's recite some prayers to Shrimad Bhagavatam and to the Lord. Narayanam Namaskritam Namam Chayva Narottamam. தேவம் சரஸ்வதி வியாசம் ததோ ஜயம் உதீரேத் ஸ்ரீன்வந்தம் ஸ்வகதா கிருஷ்ணா புண்ணிய ஸ்ரவண கீர்த்தனா ஹிரதயந்தஸ்தோஹிய பத்ராணி விதுநோத்தேஷுஹத்சதம் நஸ்தபிராயேஷு பத்ரேஷு நித்தியம் பாகவதேவையா பகவதீயுத்தமே ஸ்லோகே பக்திர்பவதி நைஷ்தகி சுடேவியர் ஓன் um verse number 6 sat sevaya dhirghaya pi jata mai dridamati hitva vadyam imam lokam ganta majjanat masi translation and purport by shila propa trila propa the ki jai by this of the absolute truth even for a few days a devotee attains firm and fixed intelligence in me consequently he goes on to become my associate in the transcendental world after giving up the present deplorable material worlds does anybody want to read the purport it is quite a short purport today hari krishna mata ji can i read yes please hari krishna transition also no the purport just the purport okay thank you thank you purport seeing the absolute truth means rendering service unto the absolute personality of godhead and the direction of the bona fide spiritual master who is a transparent medium between the lord and the neophyte devotee the neophyte devotee has no ability to approach the absolute personality of godhead by the strength of his present imperfect material senses and therefore 
and as a direction of the spiritual master, he's trained in transcendental service of the Lord. And by such training, even for some days, a neophyte devotee gets intelligence in such transcendental service, which leads him ultimately to free from perpetual inhabitation in the material world and to be promoted to the transcendental. Uh, I cannot see this, this part. This only few words here. Thank you. Can you see it? Oh, no. No, no, no. I, I can't see at all now. Uh, last, uh, okay. second to last line. Second to last line, please. It is, it is to free from the transcendental world to become one of the liberated associates of the Lord in the kingdom of God. Thank associates you. Associates of the Lord in the kingdom of God. Yeah, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you very much. So before we continue, let's... Uh, Let's just say our prayers. O Magyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopik Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Rinda Veneshwari Rishubhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Pray Panchakalpatrupascha Kripa Sindhu Vevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nepananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vray Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Prajarine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Vashatrade Shatarine All right, so thank you all for joining today and very important verse, but very philosophical. So let us see what we can take away today. There's, there's a lot, very deep. Um, I don't know if I can do any justice. So please tolerate me. And I hope that I can speak something that will help you and me try and understand this verse. Can I please ask everybody to mute yourselves? Um, otherwise, there will be disturbance. Right. So first of all, the first, first thing that is being spoken about in this verse is serving the absolute truth. So it's very important for us to understand what the absolute truth means. And right at the beginning of the Bhagavatam, I'm sure you all must have studied it. So this is actually just for me so that I can, you know, revise and meditate on what the absolute truth means. It can have so many different meanings. Absolute truth refers to a reality which doesn't change. In many of Prabhupada's lectures, he's given, you know, these statements and I've picked up a few from there. There are many, he speaks so many different statements, he says. But I've just picked up a few. I'm sure you might have some knowledge of what the absolute truth means and we can actually um, open it to all the audience also um, after I share what I picked up. Absolute truth is the source of everything, the ultimate cause of all causes. When we talk about Krishna, we talk about absolute truth. So absolute truth is Krishna himself. Is there anything any of you would like to share about the absolute truth? Anybody? If not, then we will continue. Okay. So um, interestingly, um, there are some features of the absolute truth, which is actually discussed in the first verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So there are seven features of the absolute truth which is discussed in the first verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam. 
Srimad Bhagavatam first verse says, Janmadi asya yato anyavati turatas, jarte shu abhigya swarat, te ne brahma ridaya di kavaye, muyanti yat suraya, te jovari mridam yata vinimayo yatrati sargam brisa, nam ne svena sadani rashtam kuhakam, satyam param dhimahi. So this is the first verse of. Uh, uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam. And I've picked up the Sanskrit specifically because these Sanskrit words are actually describing the features of the Absolute Truth. And also because the English translation is really, really big. So let's see. It says here, Janma the Asya Yat. So the Absolute Truth is the primeval cause of creation, maintenance, and annihilation. Then it says abhigya. Abhigya means all cognizant. It knows everything. Swarat. Swarat means fully independent, not dependent on anything or anybody at all. Then the other feature of the absolute truth is that he is the enlightener. And why is he being called the enlightener? Because tene brahma ridaya adi kavaye. Brahma is the creator. However, the intelligence to create was given to Brahma by the absolute truth, by the Lord himself or Krishna himself. Then the, one of the features of the absolute truth is also that he is a bewilderer. And why is he a bewilderer? It says here in the verse, it says muyanti. So what it does is it or Krishna puts into illusion even the most learned of sages. Right, And then the absolute truth is the ultimate foundation of this material world, this material world which is constantly changing. It constantly changes. And Krishna, the absolute truth, is not affected by this material world because he stays in his eternal abode. Satyam Param Dhimahi, that is where Krishna stays. So these are some of the features of the absolute truth. <clears throat> now this supreme truth can be perceived or un understood in three ways. And we have studied this when we were studying the Bhagavad Gita also a couple of times because even in the Second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, this kind of analogy comes up and Prabhupada explains this very nicely. So you can approach the Supreme Absolute Truth in three features as the Brahman, as the Paramatma or as the Bhagavan. And this can be really understood. Prabhupada uses the analogy of the sun, which is such a wonderful analogy to understand. When you see the rays of the sun, um, you only perceive of the sun as the sun rays. So your understanding is just that impersonal rays of the sun. <clears throat> so the supreme can be understood like that also. Then when you go further, you can understand that there is a surface of the sun. So advanced devotees understand that uh, there is a localized feature which is the Paramatma. The Paramatma is residing in each and every living entity. And then when you go further, in, like when you go further into the sun, which we as human beings cannot do, but we understand from the Bhagavad Gita that there are living entities who are able to live in the sun because there is a sun god you know, and there are other entities. And that feature can be understood by realizing that there is a sun planet within which the ruler, the sun god is there, right? And so Bhagavan realization is understanding that there is a person. He is a person. The Bhagavan is a personality. I'm just going to try and mute. So, 
So these are the three ways that we can actually realize the absolute truth. Now, the thing is, what is important to understand is that just realizing the Brahman creature is not wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. The only problem is it is a partial realization. You've not totally understood. Complete understanding is when you understand the Brahman, Paramatma and the Bhagwan feature. Like complete understanding of the sun is when you go beyond the sun rays, you see there is a sun disk and you see there is a planet, you know, like that, that is a complete understanding. Sorry, something has gone wrong. Hold on a minute. Now, as devotees, we want to understand the personal feature of the Lord Bhagavan because that is the complete understanding. And we are very fortunate that in the line that we come in, Gaudiya Vaishnavism focuses so much on the personal feature of the Lord. So we want to understand Bhagavan. And in the purple, Prabhupada is saying that. Serving the absolute truth means rendering service unto the absolute personality of Godhead. Now, the problem is that how can we render service unto the absolute personality of Godhead unless we understand things? And that is the reason why we need the direction of a bona fide spiritual master. Right? As we can see that Prabhupada in his quote in the Bhagavad Gita, Purpose 2.8, he says, a spiritual master who is 100% Krishna conscious. Sorry, may I request everybody to please mute yourselves? I try to mute everybody, but it just keeps coming on. Okay. So Prabhupada is saying a spiritual master who is 100% Krishna conscious is the bona fide spiritual master for he can solve the problems of life. Again, Prabhupada, in various talks, he gives various qualifications of a bona fide spiritual master. You know, so, so we need to, when we are in search of a spiritual master, we need to know these. We need to know who is a bona fide spiritual master. Somebody who is coming in disciplic succession. Somebody who understands Krishna consciousness. Somebody who is giving us the knowledge which is, uh, not his own interpretation, but something that has come through the disciplic succession, right? And there is no difference between his instructions and the original instructions that were given by uh, Lord Brahma. So these are the qualifications of a bona fide spiritual master. And I was very fortunate when I was doing some research to find one lecture which was given by Srila Prabhupada in honor of his own spiritual master. And this was even before he had traveled to the West to set up the Krishna Conscious Society. So it is an extremely uh, heart-touching lecture actually where he talks gloriously about his spiritual master and about the importance of getting a guru. So in his presentation, he uses a few verses. I've just taken a few, a couple of them. He, this, this lecture is amazing. So most of you might know this verse because we sing it every morning for the puja when we do. Sakshad dharitvena samaste shaste uktas tatha bhavyata eva sadbe kintu praboria priya eva tasya vande guru shri charana ravindam. So it says in the revealed scriptures, it is declared that the spiritual master should be worshipped like the supreme personality of Godhead. And this injunction is obeyed by pure devotees of the Lord. The spiritual master is the most confidential servant of the Lord. Thus, let us offer our respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of our spiritual master. So it says here that the spiritual master is the most confidential servant of the Lord. And what better to serve the Lord than learning from the most confidential servant of the Lord. And that is the reason why all of us needs the direction and needs the guidance of the spiritual master, which Prabhupada is emphasizing in today's purport, right? 
And then again, he this verse Prabhupada actually quotes in a lot of his, his lectures. Um, I'll, I'll just read the English. In order to learn the transcendental science, one must approach the bona fide spiritual master in disciplic succession who is fixed in the absolute truth. So we need to, we cannot approach Krishna directly. We cannot approach the absolute truth directly. And thus we need a spiritual master, but we need a bona fide spiritual master who is coming in the disciplic succession, who is only talking about the absolute truth, whose only desire is to liberate the fallen souls and take them back to God, or take them back to where they belong with Krishna. That is his only desire. Um, in this verse, it goes on to say that the neophyte devotee does not have the ability to approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And why is that? Why can't the neophyte devotee approach the Supreme Lord? Um, anybody? Anybody would like to give their own reasonings, understandings? I'm sure you all are uh, very advanced devotees. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Because uh, we just can't direct go to, the, we haven't got the ability to approach direct. We have to go through the medium, which is spiritual master, one of our spiritual master, like Srila Prabhupada. Yes. So, so why, why is it that we can't approach directly? What is the reason? We haven't got, we haven't got that qualification. We, we just uh, can't do that. We, yes. we are so naive we don't know anything yes yes you know, thank you yes that's no right knowledge no knowledge we have to learn the knowledge from the spiritual master correct thank correct you. so we don't have the knowledge we cannot approach the lord directly because we are also blinded by this material conditioning that we have we are all conditioned yes are, yeah we are conditioned living entities and thus we are not able to approach the Lord directly. Mm -hmm. And Prabhupada is saying here that the Lord is not to be found simply by education or by a good fertile brain, but surely he can be found by the sincere student through the transparent medium of the bona fide spiritual master. So the spiritual master is acting as a transparent medium. When we, when we use the word transparent medium, what it means is that it's like I'm here, Krishna is here, and in between I have my spiritual master. So if I'm, let's say, offering a flower to Krishna, I'm offering it through the medium of my spiritual master. But because my spiritual master is a transparent medium, it is almost like I am directly offering it to the Supreme Lord, like that. So, so the, supreme, the spiritual master is completely transparent between my dealings with the Lord. You see, and he's transparent because his desire is to bring all of us conditioned souls closer to Krishna. That is his only desire. He does not have any other desire. And thus we have to find such a spiritual master who is not desiring for his own name, fame, glory, or any other ulterior motive. His only motive is to bring us closer to Krishna. That is a bona fide spiritual master. Yes. Right? So now, um, I thought this is very interesting that we are being encouraged so much to take on spiritual masters, to take the shelter of a bona fide spiritual master. And you will see that the Lord himself actually is accepting a guru. And we can see that example in the case of Krishna. When he was on, on earth, along with his brother Balaram, he took the shelter of Sandipani Muni. And we've all heard this story. So we won't go into the detail of the story. But we know that he took shelter of a guru. He went to his guru. He performed menial services for him. And that is how he gained knowledge. So Krishna himself took a spiritual master. Not that he needed Krishna does not need a spiritual master. He is the Lord, the Supreme Lord. What is it that he doesn't know? But 
he was trying to teach us by his example why a spiritual master is important. Then we can see that Lord Ram, Lord Ram also took a spiritual master, right? He also went to the ashram of his guru, performed various services, stayed with him, served him and learned things. And then we have Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu took the shelter of Ishwara Puri. Mahaprabhu was born in, in Bengal. Um, he, for the first few years of his life, um, he obviously did, did not display any of the qualities that he is a learned, uh, he, he is the Lord actually himself. And in fact, he used to um, be very, um, he would only focus on the grammar and he wouldn't focus on any kind of devotional service. Of course, all that was an act. And then uh, one time when his, his father left his body, Jagdish Mishra, uh, Mahaprabhu went to perform his, uh, sorry, Jagannath Mishra, Mahaprabhu went to perform uh, the, the various uh, religious, you know, um, activities. He went to Gaya and that is where he met Ishwara Puri and he said to Ishwara Puri, he requested to Ishwara Puri that please initiate me. And Ishwara Puri said, recognizing that this is the Lord himself or at least recognizing that he is such a learned Brahmana, he said, you know, you're such a learned Brahmana. You don't need initiation from me. I am nobody. And at that time, Mahaprabhu begged him and said that I don't know what I will do with my life if I do not get the shelter of your lotus feet. So here we can see that the Lord himself is accepting Guru and Ishwara Puri then initiated Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then obviously Mahaprabhu, you know, we know that then he started spreading the holy name. And then of course the story goes on. I mean, the important fact over here is that how the Lord himself is accepting uh, uh, Guru. So here what we need to understand is that in the purple, Prabhupada is explaining that when a neophyte devotee takes the shelter of a guru and he completely depends on the guru and Krishna, then the results that happen, and we will look at the results in a minute, uh, in, in, this, in the verse Bhagavad Gita 5.29, the verse itself is very important, but in the purple, Prabhupada says, the greatest peace formula is simply this. Lord Krishna is the beneficiary in all human activities. Men should offer everything to the transcendental service of the Lord because he is the proprietor of all planets and the demigods thereon. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that a devotee does not depend on his intelligence or does not depend on his um, on his siddhis, on his ability to perform various yoga poses. If you see um, some of the yogis, they actually are performing various austerities. They gain a lot of siddhis and by that they try to gain or understand the absolute truth. The devotee is very, very simple. What he simply does is completely depends on Krishna. And here again, we know the story of this um, South Indian Brahmin who was trying to read the Bhagavad Gita because his spiritual master had said to him that you must read the Gita every single day. The other Brahminas in that area were laughing at him. The reason they were laughing at him is because he was not even holding the Gita in the correct way. He was holding it upside down. However, he had tears streaming down his eyes. And when Mahaprabhu saw him, he asked him, why are you crying? And the Brahmana said, I am looking at these pictures and I'm thinking how great my Lord is, that my Lord has become the chariot driver of Arjuna. He is willing to serve his devotees. And at that time, Mahaprabhu embraced this Brahmana and he said, you have truly understood the Gita. You have truly understood the love of Lord Krishna. So the point that we are making over here is it is not with our own intelligence or it is not by performing various physical 
austerities that one can understand the absolute truth or one can understand Krishna. It is simply by performing devotional service with sincerity and humility under the guidance of the spiritual master and depending totally on Krishna. And then the result is that one becomes free from perpetual inhabitation in the material world. And what that means, we all know, we've studied the Gita and we all know that we are constantly in the cycle of birth, old age, disease and death. And this cycle has been continuing for millions and millions and millions of years. However, it says that even if we take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master and approach Lord Krishna and approach uh, the absolute truth, then in a short time, in a very short time, we can become free from this material world, which is a place of constant misery. And we will be promoted to the transcendental world. We, we can reach the supreme abode of the personality of Godhead and become one of the liberated associates of the Lord in the kingdom of God. And why not? We all belong to Krishna. Krishna says, you all are part and parcels of me. We all belong to Krishna. And because we belong to Krishna, Krishna is waiting open with open arms to take each one of us back to Godhead. And the only qualification that one needs is that one is free of enviousness. One completely with all sincerity and humility is able to surrender unto the lotus feet of a spiritual master and under his guidance approach the Supreme Lord and perform devotional service. So if we start doing that, then Krishna himself is saying, what is the most famous verse of the Bhagavad Gita, which is in the 18th chapter? I mean, there, oh, there are so many famous verses, but there's this one verse that I'm referring to. Um, I'm sure most of you know it. Which verse is that? Sarva Dharman Parityajya. Dharanam Vajya. Aham Tvam Sarva Papebhyu Mokshi Yasna Mi Masucha. Thank you, Krishna Vani Mataji. So you can see that Krishna is promising to us that if you abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me, I will deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not worry. Now imagine such a promise Krishna is making to all of us. And still what is holding us back? What's holding us back is that we are still identifying ourselves with the body and not realizing that I'm not this body, I'm this soul. I am this soul, I'm part and parcel of the super soul. And when the super soul manifests externally, he manifests as the guru. So the guru is the representation of the supreme lord. He's a representation of the super soul. The super soul is trying to guide us from within. But because our consciousness is not so elevated, we are not able to hear the messages of the super soul. And thus externally, he comes as the guru. And then we are able to approach the guru submissively, inquire from him and take his uh, directions. Now, sometimes some people may say, but our guru is thousands of miles away. Or at times the guru is not present because he's left his body. Please remember that the instructions of your guru is in his lectures, in his classes, in what he has spoken. It's all there. And associating with a guru means that you associate with his lectures. Prabhupada always said that there is two ways of associating the Vapu and the Vani. The Vapu, which is the physical association, may not always be available, but the Vani is always available. It's always there for each and every single one of us. Let me just stop sharing the screen. And so we have to understand that this is the only way by taking shelter of the instructions of our spiritual master is the only way that we can approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead and we can serve the absolute truth. There is no other way. And this particular verse is actually emphasizing just this two points actually. Two points is 
that as a neophyte, because we are covered with our material senses, we cannot approach the Supreme. And thus we have to go through a via medium who is the spiritual master. So it is important to take shelter of a spiritual master. So it is 31 past eight and I will stop here. And if there are any further comments, because this is, like I said, it is a very, very deep philosophical verse. And if any of you would like to comment, um, share your realizations, that would be great. Uh, no comments, no questions. Any questions anybody has? Hare Krishna Madhaji, Tanur Pranam, all Krishna Thank you so much for such a wonderful class, Madhaji. Uh, so much to take away from this. Um, I wanted to understand the process of Aarti. You know, you said Guru is a transcendent, is a um, transparent via medium. Mm. So initially, we we offer the diva to or the or these incense to the to the guru, and then we do the Aarti, and then at the end we then again offer it. So initially, I'll be taking permission of our guru or, or say, saying thank you to him for allowing us to offer, is, or is it both? So what it is, is initially when we, when we show it to the guru, we are not actually offering it. So what we are doing is that we are taking permission from the guru, mm -hmm. you know, from our spiritual master. And when we are on the altar, let's say, if, if let's say I'm doing the arti on the altar, then I show the incense to my guru. Then I okay. show it to Srila Prabhupada. Then I also show it to uh, Gauranitai because I'm asking permission from all permission. of them saying right. that please allow me or to assist you in your service to Radha Gokulanan. And then you. I offer the incense to Radha Gokulanan. So, and then mm -hmm. when you do the last bit, last bit is actually your offering them. Okay. So first time is permission and last time is your offering. Right, right. Wonderful. I understand. I wasn't sure about the two. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I was also thinking of um, that pastime of um, the cobbler and the priest. Mm. When you talked about the Brahmin in South yes. India, yes. that knowledge and just doing the rituals is not important in terms of our devotion, mm -hmm. but actually coming from the depth of our soul and understanding the Lord as the absolute who is able to do anything and everything. Yes. That is the, the key to our devotion, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Like in the purport and in the verse, actually Prabhupada says that when the neophyte devotee takes shelter of the spiritual master, he gets the intelligence and the firm intelligence he gets that the Lord is the Supreme. Mm. So that comes only when you are serving the spiritual master rather than, you know, learning by heart the all the scriptures. Because mm. when you give the example of the cobbler and the priest, the priest knew the scriptures. He knew mm. how to perform the rituals, but he did not have faith. When Narad mm. Muni said, I'm going to see the Lord and the Lord was passing the elephant through the eye of the needle. The priest refused to believe it, but the cobbler, cobbler believed it because he said, yeah. what can my Lord not do? And that was the difference between the two. That one had the faith, the other knew the rituals. And that is why it says that your own austerities or your intelligence or jnana is, you know, will, not, will not take you anywhere. Mm. Thank you, Mataji. So nicely explained. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, there is a message that says, Lord Krishna always fulfills his promise, but does break it, break it to protect his devotees. Definitely, definitely. What a wonderful reflection that he does break his promise in order to either protect his devotee or to protect the promise that his devotee has made. So imagine the love that Lord Krishna has for his own devotees, that in order to see to it that his devotee's word comes true, he is even willing to break his own promise, which is which is wonderful reflection. Thank you. Um, another message is, may I ask a general gurus and yeah. So the question is, uh, what if the spiritual master or gurus you see on TV are surrounded by controversies in the modern era? Also, if you see a lot of sense gratification of instead of in-depth spiritual thought study, then how do we choose any organization or teacher? So um, 
I don't know whether I should be taking your name, but Mataji, you've asked this question and I will share from my own experience. So when I started my Krishna conscious journey uh, 10, 12 years back, I had exactly the same questions because I came from India. Growing up in India, I had seen what gurus do. Unfortunately, my parents were um, not in the sense totally involved, but they were following one such guru who had a huge fall down eventually uh, and actually is in, in prison right now for doing various kinds of abominable things. But so I was totally against this guru thing. And I used to think to myself that we are all part and parcel of Krishna. So why can't I approach Krishna directly? Why do I need a via medium? Why do I need a guru? But then when I started reading the Bhagavad Gita more and understanding it, I was, I was doing a course uh, on the Bhagavad Gita at this time when I had all these questions. And I started reading the Gita. The reason why I started doing the course is because when I was reading the Gita myself, I could not make sense of it. I could not understand it. I had so many questions. But when I started studying it in association under the guidance of a teacher, I started to understand it. So the more you realize things, now I will just give you a very, very plain example that for material qualifications, we are willing to approach gurus and organizations in the material world, although they may also have issues. Not all teachers who are teaching us in school and not on not all schools are bona fide in that, that sense or are over and above any kind of mistakes. But we are still willing to do it, right? So then why is it that when it comes to spiritual, spiritual things, why do we allow our intelligence to be uh, clouded by some things? Let's look at ourselves. Do we not make mistakes? Have we not made any mistakes? Are we perfect? So nobody is perfect. But Krishna has given us the intelligence that we approach then the right kind of people. And that is why the scriptures become your eyes. And you use your intelligence and scriptures to then understand which organization is actually giving you the right knowledge. And so approach that organization. For me, it was ISKCON. For you, it could be some, some other organization. I'm not saying that. But to me, with my intelligence, I saw the kind of knowledge that was being imparted by ISKCON to me. The kind of people who were involved in this were all intelligent and educated people who knew what they were talking about. In my early days, I never felt cheated, but I was never asked for specific things like you need to do this or you need to do this particular ritual or you need to donate this kind of money. I was never asked like that. So I felt comfortable, but everybody has their own journey. So one must use your intelligence in order to choose the guru and choose the organization. And you've got the scriptures. I hope that kind of answers your question. Um, anybody else? Okay, so if there are no more questions, we'll stop here. Thank you very much for uh, joining. Please do continue to join every day. It's wonderful.